The days are getting shorter. The autumn leaves are accumulating in the driveway. The nip in the air is more so of a chill now. It's that time of the year. Time to curl up in your favorite couch underneath warm throws in those cute socks with a great book and a cup of Darjeeling. Your favorite escape. But before we settle down in that comfort, we need to stock up. I could not carry much with me when I moved here from Calcutta. I packed all my books and sent them home. I have an empty bookshelf now, the one I promised to fill by the end of my stay here. So let's get started. Lucky to be in a city that has some of the best bookstores I've ever seen. Today we'll be exploring some of the best independent bookstores in New York City. They don't have big names and chains running across continents. They are small community bookstores along unassuming street corners but have stood out for their well curated collection and their character. Thriving bookstores in the day of Amazon Prime and Kindle. Not that there is anything wrong with the latter, but the experience of going to a bookstore, browsing through the shelves, running your fingers through the pages, and feeling it simply cannot be compared. It's kind of magic. The first bookstore that we will be visiting is Books A Magic, located at 225 Smith Street, Brooklyn. Books A Magic was born in May 2017 and is the newest bookstore in our list today, which also is quickly growing in its popularity. And after we stepped in, we knew just why. We were greeted by a welcoming staff and the general atmosphere was very warm, with book lovers covering every inch of the store. It always feels good to be among people who share the same love and respect for the little things in life. The store has a very fresh look to it. They have this wonderful space for the children's section where they also host weekly reading sessions. doing a little peekaboo to their peekaboo windows. Our next stop is West Sider Rare and Used Bookstore. I was introduced to this bookstore by my husband. It's still one of the best places he has taken me to. You will instantly warm up to this tiny bookstore off 81st and Broadway. Full of warmth and books from floor to ceiling, my piece of heaven on the Upper West Side.
The nooks and corners you just want to get lost in. The House Fiction, Literature, First Editions, Children's Book, Cooking, Poetry, History, Art, Architecture, Film, Philosophy, Sport, Illustrated, Games, Chess, Graphic Novels, Comics, Cartoons, Science, Fiction, Mysteries, Horror, Greek and Roman, Classics, Plays, Theater, Music Books, Lit Crit, all well arranged in alphabetical order from floor to ceiling. You might even find a rare treasure you were not even looking for and take it home. Next stop, Book Culture on Columbus. The first bookstore I stepped into in New York City. I was strolling along Columbus Avenue a few blocks from the hotel we were putting up in and then I see the cutest store ever. I had to go in and check. Hashtag sucker for all things cute. They have an impressive section about everything you need to know about the city you live in. These are like blind dates. Okay.
stationary holics you should be prepared to go crazy down they have the cutest merchandise and witty cards The first time I stepped into this bookstore and it instantly became a favorite maybe because of the energy the mood and the vibe of this whole place and the first thing I noticed but it was very pro feminism We are going to stray a little from our theme of independent bookstore and include this Japanese chain of bookstores because it is worth making the exception. Kinokuniya is the largest bookstore chain in Japan. Its first overseas store opened in San Francisco in 1969. Several other bookstores have since opened in the United States in cities including Los Angeles and New York. My husband was here for some manga love and he just got that. The store is divided into 3 floors. The first floor that you walk into intermingles English and Japanese in its numerous shelves. The basement has art and craft and some very cute stationery. And then the second floor houses purely manga and anime.
Since we could only admire and marvel at the glossy images and sketches, we had to move over to the English manga section to at least understand something. Next stop is one of the most iconic bookstores of Manhattan, the Strand Bookstore on the corner of 12th Street and Broadway and two blocks off Union Square. It is probably the biggest bookstore I have stepped into. They have miles and miles of books, 18 miles as the urban legend goes.
It's a book lover's paradise. It never disappoints and I don't think there is anything you cannot find here. My first time here was indeed overwhelming. The short days of winter, but we need to cover one last bookstore, so do stay with us. Finally, yay, blue stockings. A book reading session was going on when we reached there, so we dillied and dallied and in the end just let ourselves in. Blue Stockings is a volunteer-run, collectively-owned radical bookstore powered entirely by women. The name is derived from the badass 18th century English collective, the Blue Stocking Society, established to promote literature written for and by women. This bookstore has character. It may not have eyeballs grabbing table displays and hard to miss glittery merchandise but it does have a hard to miss non-conformist air about it which is what I loved the most. It's unapologetic and in your face. The store covers topics such as feminism, queer and gender studies, global capitalism, climate and environment, political theory, police and prisons, race and black studies, radical education and the likes. They house rare magazines, publish zines and journals and also have in store alternative menstrual products.
everybody to the second half of our John Strong reading. We're going to be opening it up with a little film clip and read. To work with so many amazing writers. Uh, and Tyler has been just a really intellectually and creatively rewarding experience. So I'm really grateful for that. Um, do you all want to say anything else? That challenges architecture, private homes, religious institutions, hospitals, military building, monuments as a patriarchal authority, sexual hierarchies, and distinct gender differentiation. Filming ourselves, me and my girlfriend, in the process of fucking in a church, a castle, a museum, a bank, and other monuments, we try to deconstruct their sacred, heroic, and sexist dimensions. We infiltrate these buildings. We have five minutes, but we just have time for seven minutes. We want to see the whole entire film that's in reality is a big poem. Uh, just let them know and then we try to organize a section with the entire film, okay? Thank you. The architecture impasse, impact, mise en forme, construction. Je suis négation. Thank you.